if a player is coming over the top, we'll generally see them out in this position where the handle would be a lot further out. That is usually because they haven't got the sensation of pivoting and rotating, yeah. getting this golf club, swinging around our body and mark enough, correct? <laughs> All right, Zane, so let's talk about the right foot. And there's quite a few drills out there involving this trail foot and placing it back and behind. And we see an application of that would generally be, I would say the majority of the time that drill is used, would be to help encourage the low point to get forward, get ball first, ground second contact. But we were talking before and you said you have quite a few different applications of what this back foot drill can do. Yeah. So let's talk about some of those, what you would see with the recreational golfer, and then how you'd go about making those adjustments with that back foot. Yeah, so there's probably like three of them as it is. Yeah, pretty straight, so you don't need much of it. You know, you have to get your, your low point going, don't you? Yeah. But yeah, at the, the first one would be uh, low point. Yeah. Like that, it kind of manages that. There's all sorts of chat, especially like the modern day coaching of like you know the shift off, you know the, the tumble back left, that sort of stuff. Which I don't know if you know everyone has their preferences. I'm not a massive fan of that. I yeah. think people do it without trying to do it. Yeah, sure. But you know, if you give them a lesson, to somebody who's like any level really yeah the first part is you've got to get the strike right correct and it's i feel like it's a real low maintenance way to be if you if you'd be more centered yeah rather than having the shift off and shift on which i think with driver it works yeah i think with irons you can get yourself into a bit, a bit of bother mm. so the right foot back kind of works works with that because it's essentially yes like, as you demonstrated you know you'd have a bit more weight on the left mm. on the right on the left leg mm -hmm. right leg being back and almost on the toe so it's like you're going to be staying here so you can't really you can't shift off yeah you got that part to it so that's that's, that's pretty obvious yeah, yeah but that but as obvious as it is people sort of don't manage that bit very very well yeah and then the other two bits for me would be depending on the intent of that right foot back yeah. where you hit it you can get two different outcomes so for a lot of good players a lot of good players in general like get stuck under on the way through mm -hmm. but are able to manage it you know maybe draw it or fight a block and a hook so i would actually have them put their right right leg back so they make sure they work their upper body more. Yeah. So almost to retire the lower half, have to then move their chest and open up and hit down and left on it more mm -hmm. to get them Still less getting dumped right up. side bend on the way down. But then then for someone who's like, you know, more of a, your club player, yeah. which, you know, unfortunately are, are plagued by the, the over the top shot. Sure. They have no clue what it's like to have depth on the backswing. So then having their right foot back, they go like, oh, this is different. What's all this space in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in that one drill, there's kind of like a few different aspects changing the intent. You can get a few, whatever you want out of it. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's talk about those three um, in sequence. So the first one, when you place the right foot back into this position here, the concept of low point in the golf swing, right? We have three fundamentals of golf. We've got impact, speed, and control. Impact is a priority. No matter yeah. what sport you play, it doesn't matter how good your speed is, how good your management of that speed is, how much your intent of alignment and accuracy is, if you're not striking that ball well, yeah. specifically with somewhat near the groove surface of this golf club, yeah. the rest of the, the two fundamentals there don't matter. So with the impact component, when I set up and I put this trail foot back into this position, that really encourages me to get centered over the ball. And if I was to feel as if I'm just keeping a little bit more weight on that lead side without shifting off it into that position, well then all things being equal, I'm more likely to strike the ball first in the ground second. So that touches the first one. Now, the second one that you were talking about, we'll talk about depth before we talk about the good player trying to stop themselves getting stuck under. But what I want you to do is come over here for me and I want you to kind of talk about the benefits of with this trail foot back here, what that allows you to do in regards to depth, and we'll point out depth referring to where the end of the handle is relative to the ball line. So this would be not a functional swing pattern to try and swing from the inside and strike the ball. And this here would be definitely something that you'd see more so with a professional. Yeah, for sure. So I would actually, the first part I would start, I would have you have a little bit of a narrow stance. Mm -hmm. I feel the narrow stance stops you from shifting off so much. If you get too wide, you can still rock to the right a little bit. Correct. So then drop your right foot back. And the detail of that would be for me, would be toe, right toe and line with the left heel. Yeah, perfect. So you're kind of working something the same each time. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And then if you swing up to the top. From this position here, Sam, we can see that the end of the handle, if you draw a line vertically down, it would kind of fall to a probably about here, which if I had my normal stance, it would be through that trail angle, right? right? Something that you see with 
most of the best ball strikers out there in the world. Now, if a player is coming over the top, we'll generally see them out in this position, right? Where the handle would be a lot further out. Yeah. And that is usually because they haven't got the sensation of pivoting and rotating, yeah. getting this golf club, swinging around our body and knock enough, correct? Yeah, that's right. So when I set up here and I get back there, what does this allow us to do with having this trail foot back behind us? Well, the first part is you've got, you've got your right hip back, your right knees back, and then as you, as you said, start, let's see, probably go to about here, top of the back swing, mm -hmm. and as you start down, when you get left arm level to the ground on the way down, you want it to be angled in somewhat from this line. Correct. Baseline, let's say. Yeah. So it means as you, as you continue to turn, 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 you're always coming from the inside to square to be able to not come over the top. You know, essentially with an iron, you go right deep into it, couldn't you? But essentially, if, if you swing on baseline and the ball is positioned back enough, it should have a slight draw in it. Yeah. You know, we, can get, we can get into all that sort of stuff. But that would be the, it's this it's part for me that I would say, it would be the, someone who's able to have this left arm mm -hmm. angled in yeah. somewhat. So let's say 20 degrees yeah. when, it, when the left arm levels to the ground, means that from there, as you keep turning, couple tracking down from the inside, you can keep turning to square it up. As opposed to say if somebody's got this on on the feet line, let's say, mm. the P5, left on level to the ground, you keep turning, club head goes out out and over the top. Yeah. And now some good players from there would go tip it back tip under. Tip it back under. Yeah. But you know, you're not so good player would just keep turning around the corner. Yeah. Then you get the big old slice. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, within this drill, and we'll we'll now refer to the good player that does get stuck under, right? Not only does this help with low point control, getting the ball first ground second contact, having this trail foot up on its toe, feeling like we pivot in a centered fashion allows enough depth. But then if you're a good player and you're so used to dumping it back under, you're stating that with this trail foot up on its toe, it almost helps you feel like you're covering the ball more with the chest and unloading the arms underneath your chest rather than getting into this position right here. Yeah. where we get too much right side bend, the body starts to early extend and we see a lot of handsy players through the moment of impact. Yeah, exactly. So you kind of get like the, like the bottom being, being, the, um, being the legs, top half of the chest. Yeah. What you tend to see is like the, in, in an effort to put on a lot of power, yeah. the legs will go first, yeah. chest will hang back. And they will look early extended. Yeah. Chest is now hanging back because the legs have all gone too much. And as you say, club trap behind, yeah, often goes arm swinging up and off the body. Correct. Get a bit of shooting consistencies. Good players can manage it quite well, but mm. over time it'll catch up with them. Yeah. So when they're being back, so now what we're saying is we're trying to reverse that role, we're trying to almost do less with the legs on the way at the start of the downswing, more with the chest. So the details of that for me would be get the knee behind the hip joint. Okay. So you'd actually want to turn your right foot out some, somewhat. Yep. So that the, it would feel like the knee stays behind the hip joint for longer into the downswing. So okay. I'm having to get, so the right shoulder is going down and through without this kicking forward. Can you see, see how the knee's getting way ahead of the hip joint? Correct. And that traditional, like real stuck yeah. position that you see a lot of good players get themselves into. And you can hit like big block cuts if the face gets super yeah, open or exactly. real big snipes as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so the drill for that, would I would have them like focus on this on the knee, almost like this seam line being like tilted backwards. Yeah. And then having to turn, then turn the chest or right shoulder through, whatever is whatever is, is fit to the player really, mm -hmm. but knock knock shots away, and almost feel like they hit small fades. Yeah. And then for um, you know for like a real like you know good ball strike, I'd actually get them to hit drivers off the deck. Yeah. Doing this hitting like a mini driver off the deck. Yeah. Right foot back, this stays back, and have so you have to really turn down onto it, and that just gets rid of the whole Getting backing up, up low point going back face taking over, armsy, all that terrible stuff that <laughs> at some point. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get myself set up here and I want you to just come talk a little bit more as I kind of move through the position of the top of the swing about when you were talking about the alignment of the trail hip and that leg of how keeping it back for longer is beneficial to allow the arms to unload, right? Because you said that if I let my trail hip and trail knee fire out, yeah. you see, without any conscious thought of these arms, yeah. they're instantly thrown out. Outside of this initial baseline here, the club head's gonna come out and we can either hit some vicious shanks in that position, otherwise we're gonna cut down on the cross, right? <laughs> so, some shockers. Yeah, some shockers, so straight into the mosque. So, from the top of the swing here, chest and everything's back. 
Now, that movement there, Zane, that's a, that's a shifting of pressure towards the lead foot, right? Now, with this right foot back, we've kind of already got ourselves positioned there. But yeah, the, so it's kind of, you're, you're almost preset forwards yeah. with this drill. This is what you're kind of doing. You're kind of, you're practicing kind of halfway down to shoulder level on the way through. Cause you're almost, you're presetting forward. You're not having to worry about the shift left. You're already set left. Mm. So now you can just concentrate. We're talking about the turn. Yeah. Like the, the turning rates of the lower body and upper body. Yeah. So then you could, so from a better position, you can start to turn the upper body hard because you haven't got to go because obviously on a downswing mm. it's like there's a shift and turn yeah so you've like almost pre-put in shift correct 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 so this specifically if you're a good player and you're getting too dumped under your pelvis is extending towards the target and you're flipping it what this allows you to do is essentially get the sensation that your backside is staying further back for longer that allows you to get the, the sensation that you are almost slowing down, even though that's not what's happening, slowing down the lower half so the upper body can work a little bit faster to catch up to that sequence, stay down, and like yeah. you said, hit that kind of cut shot across it yeah, there. Yeah, very much so, yeah. So I'll hit one using that application there. So right foot back in line with the lead heel. Yeah. Are we straightening this or are we kind Yeah, of... it'll be a little bit straighter. Okay, yeah. perfect. So that feels great because as soon as I straighten that, like if I use that as a sort of a crutch there, I can feel that I'm putting a lot of pressure on. Yeah. But by straightening that, that yeah. shifts kind of a lot more weight onto the lead side. I almost feel like I'm slightly a little yeah. bit more closed off. You always anyway. want to feel like you keep it straight. Yeah, down, cool. All right, so I'm going to hit like a, a little low one here. Yeah, nice. We can see how punchy that came out, yeah. ball first, ground second contact. And that would be a great one for a player who's kind of getting too stuck under. So with the right foot back drill, we've really got three main applications here and there's a plethora more. Yeah. The first would be low point control, ball first, ground second. Overall, it doesn't matter who you are, that's beneficial. Yeah. Uh, secondary for the beginner golfer, allowing them to get enough depth in the golf swing, which is important to get the hand path working in such a way where the club can deliver from an inside into the draw. Yeah. And then finally, for that professional golfer or the, the better player who does tend to get a little bit more dumped under and flipped, the right foot back drill just puts your body into a position where you can sequence that downswing a little bit better and then makes a more, let's say, consistent and quality impact. So right foot back, a little bit straighter in line with the toe. Swing into the top, I feel like I've got a lot of room. Certainly not early extending towards the golf ball at all. Club head comes naturally from the inside. Now let's turn that into a shot. Plenty of room, mate, felt great. Right.